Welcome back to the channel, y'all. Today, I'm really excited because the UPS man came and I've got the valve train stuff to do mixed up balls here. So this is probably going to be like a two-part series because there's a lot of information to cover. Uh, I can't thank Howard's Cams enough for coming on board for Project Mixed Up Balls, getting us the camshaft and valve train components that we need. And a special thank you to Kurt Peters for that. And uh, so, yeah. Let's get started on setting up the valve train on Mixed Up Boss. Okay, so here's the things that we're gonna to use to set up the valve train on this motor. You can see I've already done a little bit of mocking up, setting up spring height, and we'll get into that more here in a minute. You know, in order to do this, I start out with my checker spring, make sure you have some of those valve seat locators you notice that these two are different we're going to talk about that in a little bit i'm using a titanium retainer with 10 degree locks we're going to get into more of that later because one thing that i do believe in whatever components that you're using i always source the locks and the retainers from the same people so let's start by opening this cam box and see what we have okay so this is the box that the cam comes in one of the first things that jumps out at me is once again look at this 100 percent american made that plays a huge part to me because i believe in american made products but let's open it up and see what we have okay got some decals and the cam card We'll talk about that here in a minute. Camshaft, along with the dowels. So let's take this out of the pack for the first time and see what we have. There it is. Now, I'm not knocking any other companies, but one of the reasons that I like Howard's is all of their uh, solid roller camshafts is ground on an American-made billet piece of steel. They don't use the cast iron billets. I think they're called SADI cores, S-A-D-I cores. But anyways, this here is going to last. If you start running really heavy spring pressure on a cast iron core, eventually you could get into problems. So, man, that's a nice piece. So let's talk about this cam card here for just a second. Okay, so here's the cam card that we're going to be running. This is an actual off-the-shelf part number, Howard's part number, 222313-08. Now, a lot of people, including myself, would consider this a small camshaft given the amount of power that we're trying to generate. But, with the cylinder heads that we're using and the tunnel ram set up, I believe this camshaft is going to get me there. I also believe it's going to give me the drivability that I'm looking for with a 4,000 pound truck. First things first, mind you, all of these specifications are listed as a 1-6 rocker ratio because that's standard forward affair for a small block. Lash 22 thousandths, lift 624, 656. With the rocker ratio that I'm gonna be running, that should put me at about 675, 705 right there. Uh, 291, 295 advertised dur duration. Come over here, it's 259, 263 on the exhaust, and like I said, a 108 lobe separation. So this is the camshaft that we're gonna be running. I actually have another camshaft on standby 
for down the road. So we'll get into that when the time comes. If for some reason we end up falling short making the power go with this, we'll put the big bump stick in it and let it eat. So I told you that we were gonna talk more in depth about these locators. While they perform the same function, one can get you into potential problems. How can that be? Well, the purpose of the locator is to actually locate the spring. When you're purchasing locators, make sure that you find something that's close to the same size as the inner diameter here of the spring to keep the spring from walking around at high RPMs. Because if you were to use this one, that extra slop can cause it to, one, wear the spring out because that's gonna generate a lot of heat. Two, your valve train can lose control and you can get into float issues or bounce issues. And the third one is actually, you can rip your um, valve seal apart if the spring wobbles over and it catches that, it will actually damage the seal. So just keep that in mind. So the first thing that we're gonna to do to determine our spring height and all of that is we're gonna use just the locator. And we're gonna put it down here and we're gonna slip a seal on. I've already put a little bit of oil on there to keep it from damaging it. Okay, press it all the way on. And now, another measurement that you wanna check is to make sure that the retainer to valve seal clearance is gonna be enough for the camshaft that you're running. Since the most lift that I'm gonna see is 705 on the exhaust, you can see that we have well over an inch, almost an inch and 100 between the bottom of the retainer to the top of the valve seal. So we're good there. And now what we're gonna do is take our spring height mic and put it in here. And our retainer and keepers. You'll notice that I'm using a beadlock uh, retainer because you got beadlock grooves cut in the valve so all right once that's up let's see what kind of uh seat height that we're working with here or spring height installed height whatever you want to call it okay so it appears that just using the locator we're at 2.063 maybe. That would be my guess right there because you can see it's in between the five and the zero, uh, zero so that probably be three. I already know that my installed height for my springs need to be 1.90. Now one good thing about this is this establishes that Greg has this set up so that you could run really large lift with this if you so choose to do, do so. So now we gotta do some math to come up with the proper installed height for our springs so that we get what we need as far as the pressures that we're looking for. So now that I know that we're working with a 2.063 uh, installed height from the factory, if you will, so now you have to put shims underneath the locators to get the installed height. I'm using pack uh, shims here that come in different thicknesses, 50 thousandths, 30 thousandths, 20, and 15. So you can kind of mix and match until you get exactly what you're looking for. Now, one thing it's important to note, for me, I always check the installed height on all of the valves because you don't wanna take anything for granted. You wanna make sure that the installed height is perfect for each spring, that way that you know that you got perfect poundage on each seat because the differences of how much the seat could be ground, especially on an engine that you're rebuilding, 
if the valves have been ground you're going to have different installed heights possibly and that's where shimming this up to get the proper installed height becomes very very important so as you can see here i found the shim combination to get me right at the 1.90 inch installed height that i was looking for these springs right here are pack alloy set up from that Howard's worked with pack to develop. Um, it's a great spring. The installed height for this is going to be 1.9. And I checked the spring pressure over at uh, Visard's, and I'll put a picture of that up. And they were spot on. Right at 1.90, they were 240 pounds. And it opened, it's going to deliver... 625 pounds and that should be able to get us to the rpm range that we're looking for with mixed up boss well we got all of our installed height set correct i'm going to put all of the springs on except for these two because i'm going to put checker springs on it when we uh, degree the cam in on the engine so yeah let's get that going So as you can see here, I've got this cylinder head ready to go on to the engine, ready for mock-up. Got my checker springs on there so we can do the um, valve the piston clearance, do the push rod length check so that I can get those ordered and on the way. And we can set up these beautiful Jessel shaft rockers. I mean, these things are just a work of art. So... I got to get my button gear, get the other head put together. So until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. I'll catch you later.